great audience. Let's give this band another big round of applause for all the work. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching the boys here. See, years ago we had like band photographer. Now that we have these phones, we have band photographers. Lots of them, right? So that's great. So all you guys have a, a social media page or you can post the pictures on or whatever. Okay, all right, great. So wonderful job, band, wonderful job. Interesting how the band before you had like 12 people. And did you hear how they sounded? Clean, pristine, uh, things were covered off very nicely. And you guys are well on your way to doing the same thing. There's a lot of great things happening here. Uh, with more musicians, there's more opportunity for us not to play together, but you guys are doing a great job in holding things together, watching your conductor. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here early to watch the other band. Second thing is your personal warm-ups. I thought where you guys did a great job just getting stuff ready. You weren't overblowing as a you know, teacher was taking care of the tuba player, getting everything ready there. Um, you guys, I didn't hear snippets of the repertoire. You know, often we hear, we will rock you being played during the warm-up. We don't want that, right? We want that you guys just getting yourselves ready. So good job with that. Percussion, really nice work. Um, overall, I do have one little thing just to remind you of. Make sure you're watching the conductor. Lots of energy coming from the back there. The brake drum was amazing, like right on the balance. I guess the, without having that curtain there, it just the resonant, it was actually perfect. Like this sort of sounded beautiful. But make sure you're watching the conductor, because at times, um, we're just we're drifting a little tiny bit behind the band, and we want to make sure that we don't mislead them by giving them you know, signals that we're slowing down, okay? Uh, percussion, um, not, of course, not the brake drum, but other instruments. Uh, be careful in this auditorium. Uh, when you, at the end of a song or the end of a phrase, um, sometimes the percussion doesn't ring on, so the bells rung on a few times when we were sort of stopping, so make sure that we do dampen those. It's really important. Um, as we know, music is a combination of sound and silence. Silence is indicated by the rest, so we want to make sure that we are adhering to those, um, so we're going forward. So, great repertoire. Um, you guys are set up very, very well. I love having the bass clarinets up here the front. That's great. So your sound projects and we can hear you very well. Oboe, thank you for not being a soloist through all three songs, right? Often we hear that with, with young oboe players, but very, very, very well done. Good blend, good balance. Um, at times I could have used a tiny bit more, but I'd rather, you know, we can hear you very well, which is, is great. Saxophones, uh, thanks for not uh, overpowering the band, because that can happen as well too. Um, trombone players, there's lots of you back there, and a couple of you are, uh, you know, my all-stars, right? So we want to make sure that Trombone players, if we can, there's a few more stands. Try to have your own stand, if you can, right? And the reason for that is if you, for example, um, this person here, when you're playing, it's great. If your stand's on the right, your music, your bell's coming out on the left, the sound projects to the front. The person next to you, not as easy, because your sound's going to go into the music stand. So we do want to hear that pure, authentic sound. Um, I suggest moving your French horns way up to the front. So is a French horn or a French horn is that? One, one today, okay. So um, I don't know how where you sit when you rehearse, but I would put you next to an alto saxophone player because normally you're playing the same music. But then if for concerts, I put you right up in this vacant chair we have here, maybe the second one in. Because the French horn, whether you guys know this or not, Star Wars, movie themes, video games, almost every kind of music produced has French horn in it. It's that type of instrument that provides that background, that nice sort of glue that holds the ensemble together. So we want to make sure it really comes out. And you're playing more of the alto part. So back there you're sitting with our tenor friends, right? So this would, might help you with pitch as well too, right? So make sure we, we do sing that out. Um, lower brass, you know, that's all cool. If you have your phone out, just put it away. If it's my mom calling, let her know that I'll call her back when I'm done. She knows I'm at Wonderland and I'm safe, so that would be great. So thank you so much for immediately doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, so lower brass. Once again, really nice work pulling things out, moving things forward. A um, couple suggestions. So power rock. We hear this song like, like way too much. Like probably, I hear 12 bands a day. Probably eight bands a day play this. Yeah. Yeah, and most of them play it badly. All right, but you guys did a phenomenal job. I love the vocal. I don't think I've ever heard a band do the vocal at the beginning. So some really nice work on that. Um, but I do have a criticism. And you guys are saying, what? So the band played really well. Dynamics were great. Take the foot stomps more seriously. Okay, right at the top. We want to hear a clean boom, boom, tap, boom, boom, tap. And when you hear the recording, you're going to hear almost like you guys were running in the first two measures, right? We weren't quite together. So take, like you guys took the vocal seriously. You guys were having fun with that. You know, no one was like screaming or shouting, which is sometimes happens. But you guys did a, did a really great job with that. It was fun, entertaining. But make sure those foot stomps are right on. Because that's the signature of, that's actually the hook of the whole song. Doom, doom, tap. Doom, doom, tap. 
So when I was a kid, like around your age, maybe a little bit older, that's when that song actually came out. As soon as we heard, dum, dum, ta, we knew that was what's going to happen. So when you hear some sort of Michael Jackson riff, you know right away it's going to be a Michael Jackson tune. Right? And there's tunes you guys listen to now. As soon as you hear that first measure, it's like, oh, I know what that song that is, right? So you want to make sure we don't have sort of a scamper at the beginning. Okay, so otherwise, uh, some great playing throughout. Um, just a reminder, once again, always making sure that we um, always know where the melody is and the melody comes to the forefront. Um, but dynamics were very good. Um, and, then, and another one bites the dust. So when we got to that part, once again, good work, but then we wanted to play it faster. So I'm not sure if the drummers wanted to play it faster or the band did, but it wasn't the tempo we started with at 29. Now, having said that, I love the faster tempo. Right, so I would have kind of tried to gravitate to that right away, 29, so be aware of it. Star Wars, yeah. The last band, the only thing, bad thing about the last band, they didn't play Star Wars. The seven bands prior to you did, and you have started the next streak of Star Wars performances. So you guys are trendsetters, so we'll see what happens on, on Monday when we resume at this venue. So Star Wars at the beginning, okay, great, great rendition, percussion, once again, nicely done. Um, great to hear the cymbal crashes right off the top. But our dynamic marking is piano, or mezzo piano. So that means we're looking at something soft. So I would prefer that the band start softer. Um, be careful overall with the those little dots, okay? We used to say those little dots are not fly proof, right? But we don't say that anymore, but I just did. But the little dots are actually staccatos, but they're not accents, okay? The dots are not accents, so this means to play them short. So make sure we keep them short. In the beginning of Star Wars, Star Wars, keep them short and soft. And then when we get to number five, the whole band comes in. Oh, not the whole band, they come in a little bit softer. And then you can play softer, I heard you play softer. So that you kind of get the audience, it's almost like a mysterious kind of start to this. And then we work our way to the end. And you guys at the end of this fabulous job on those last five measures with the dynamics. It sounded really, really nice. So just kind of experiment more with starting a little softer in this particular piece of music, right? Because the next one, we got the break drum coming in right off the top and the nice, exciting and forceful intro. So we want to make sure we can have a bit of a contrast with that as well. Uh, good rhythmic control. As you know, what's written here isn't exactly what's on the, uh, the recording, right? So we want to make sure that we, uh, you know, you guys are adhering to the rhythmic qualities of it here. Once again, just be careful. Flutes probably could have used a bit more of you at 21, right? And without, you know, there's lots of you, right? We've got about three rows of flutes, right? So make sure that all of us are really kicking in and doing our part to, to move things forward. Where's my baritone? There was a baritone saxophone player. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, so once again, I, I would... You know, maybe move you guys more into the bass pod over here, right? Um, if I can re like rewrite my career, seriously, honestly, full transparency, I would become a baritone saxophone player, right? Rather than being a percussionist, I would be a baritone saxophone player. Um, greatest instrument in the jazz band. There's, you know, great opportunity to play in the concert band. You're, you're playing the bass parts for us, along with the tuba player and bass guitars. And so, once again, don't be shy. Sing it out, because we want to hear the, the bottom part of that, right? Um, the bass guitar players, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you so much for not overpowering the band. You have electronics there, and you can very easily have destroyed the concert. We've heard a few of those being destroyed over the years here at Wonderland, so thank you for, for not doing that, okay? But back to the flutes. Yeah, just give us more at 21. Give us more. You've got the melody there. There's lots of you playing. Um, if, you know, once again, as I mentioned, the trombone players being my, my favorite students, because you get your own stand. You are also my favorite students, and if we can have our own stand possible for a flute so you can sit up and everybody's able to sit properly, that would be great. Others of us can share, except for the oboe player, I guess. You're the only oboe player, so you do get your own stand automatically, right? Um, but we want to make sure that we're, we're adhered to that. And once again, um, you're watching your conductor very well. She's giving you some great direction on, on the dynamics. She's talked about dynamics. She's encouraged you. So the adjudicator's going to talk about dynamics. I'm sure she said all of this. So just make sure we're always exaggerating that. So I always tell students that if I give you a written test right now, if I get a, a theory test, it's like, oh no, I have a theory test. I know all of you would pass. You know what all these symbols mean. You know what they are. You might describe them in your own words, but you have an idea of how it goes. Make sure that you're able to demonstrate how they go during your concert. So I'm sure you know what a crescendo is. I'm 100% sure you know what it is. What it, you can probably tell me what it is, but then make sure you can play it, right? Put it into practice so you can do that, right? So, you know, it's like somebody says, oh, I, I can fix your car, no problem, I'll fix your car. And they come in and they don't fix your car, right? It's like, oh, I shouldn't have listened to that, right? So we always, so make sure when you're playing music that you demonstrate to us through your performance that you actually are able to do these things. Thoris Hammer, once again, very beginning, wind chimes, you remember the wind chimes at the top? Very, very well done. 
Okay, once again, make sure we don't get so caught up in what we're doing that we don't watch the director. Okay, uh, great work with the uh, the band coming in. I thought you guys were really getting warmed up by this point. Once again, be careful with the staccatos. Make sure that they stay short. We don't overemphasize those. Uh, at 19, the Woodwind Choir. We started playing here clarinets, uh, flutes, and the bass clarinets. You guys sounded really amazing in this section. I can hear the country melody being played. You're singing it out. And like the baritone saxophone players, you guys are really, really, really important. Right? So how many of you like live in a house, an apartment, a shed? And, and below whatever you live in is something called a foundation. Right? How many of you have a basement? Is there a basement? Okay. Yeah, so imagine the basement without those blocks or without the cement around the four walls, right? House is gonna fall there, right? So a band without a bass section, that could potentially happen. We had a band here yesterday. Uh, not one bass instrument. No bass clarinet, no tuba, no bass guitar, like no bass instrument. And they had one trombone player, right? And bless his heart, right? He's trying his best. But they, some of the stuff they were playing, they played actually very, very well. Some of the chords didn't sound right, and they were saying, I thought we played wrong notes. I said, no, you didn't actually didn't play, for my ears, sake, any wrong notes at all. The problem is you were missing like the bass note. So if you play piano, you know, if you went home tonight and you played the piano, that's right. What if I went home tonight and all the keys from the left hand are missing? That'd be like kind of weird, right? So you want to make sure that you understand the importance of bass clarinet and baritone sax and baritone, euphonium, trombone, tuba, those instruments. You provide such a solid foundation for the band so, and you're vitally important. So um, moving forward here, once again, great work with dynamics, um, leading us to the end of the piece. You guys, once again, did a really nice job. I can't, the break drum was amazing. This, it was an amazing day for break drum. I did a concert once in Carolina, in Carolinas, played this church and there was a stone wall there was this gong part, that gong never sounded so good. So I'm not sure that break drum's ever going to sound as good again with that open part you had behind you. Um, good work leading us to the end of the ending of the tune. Once again, make sure we're differentiating between our accents and our staccatos. And those accents, make sure we lean on them for full value. So overall, I want to congratulate you guys for like a really fine performance. Thank you for uh, finishing off our morning here with some, some excellent music. And you're working very well together. You're developing some great habits. Uh, and I just want to thank you for your professionalism. Being early, getting up on stage. Uh, I don't know if you even noticed, but when you guys were like, warming up on your own, like a little behind of activity, your director, I don't know if you raised, raised your hand or said something, within two seconds, all of you were silent. So that to me speaks volumes, no pun intended. But that speaks volumes about how you guys are working with your conductor and respecting what she's doing. And as a result of the respect and hard work, they sound amazing. So, on behalf of Canada's Wonderland, here's the Performance Appreciation Award. Oh, and she's doing the drum show. Look at this drum. Thanks, guys. My only fear, my only fear was, uh, you guys forgot some mallets at school or whatever, that's cool. And I looked at my drumsticks and I thought, are they using my Dave Buckle Classics to play that break drum? But you weren't, so thank you. <laughs> that's okay, that's good. So thanks for using these from that break, that's awesome. All right, guys, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for being part of our festival.